Eric Schoenfeld here with TechCrunch and Greg Kumparik in San Francisco. Today was the announcement of the iPhone 4S. Yep. Greg, what did you think were, was the biggest takeaways from the, uh, the announcement today? The biggest takeaway is that Apple seems to be pretty much stuck in a trend of release, then revise, then release, then revise. And so if you buy the first one, you don't necessarily need to worry too much about the next one. So. so are you, were you disappointed with uh, the announcement or? No, uh, because I think that the rumors are always going to set some things a little bit low, some things a little bit high. And what really comes out is a, a practical thing in the middle. You know, this is if, if you really look at what Apple does year to year, this is the, the next logical step for them. They're not going to erase everything they did with the 4. It's, it's, it's the same thing they did with the 3G. They, they released the 3GS, which is a, a trivial kind of not super significant upgrade. But it's just enough for people who didn't get it on the first one. Right. And so the iPhone 4S is the exact same design as yep. the iPhone 4. And it's yes. really the insides that are different. Yes. Right? So what are the main differences between the iPhone 4 and the 4S? So the iPhone 4S uses uh, the dual core A5 chipset, which is the same one that's in the iPad, which is you know, significantly faster. That's really the, the main one. Uh, beyond that, there's a much better camera. Uh, and just a lot of the specs within, like a, a kind of, kind of, sort of improved battery life, and it's just kind of trivial upgrades throughout. Right, and, and dual, it's a it's a world phone with dual GSM and CDMA, which right probably doesn't matter to you because you're going to have a carrier that has one or sure. the other, unless you travel. Yeah, it's it's mainly uh, for travelers, and it's also a big thing for Apple because it, it's it's harder to ship two phones than it is to ship one phone. You know, now they only have to worry about whether or not they have one phone in stock. But the biggest thing really is iOS five. Absolutely, right. you know, and I think that's I think that's something that the tech community is kind of missing because so many people on Twitter and on, on blogs, th for one reason or another, they already have iOS five. Be it they they snuck in as a as a developer or on their friend's account or or what have you, so they're already used to iOS five. And what they're forgetting is that iOS five is huge. And for this to, for iOS iOS five to finally be launching, for a lot of these people, this stuff is brand new. You know, it's going to be an entirely new experience with the new notifications and and reminders and and everything. Right, and iCloud, all the iCloud right. features. Uh, and and, uh, and the, the iPhone 4S is going to be the best phone to run iOS 5 apps on. I mean, no sure. doubt, because of the faster processor and, and everything else. Sure. Uh, and it'll even have some apps that are exclusive to iPhone 4S, right, which is uh, the Siri voice uh, command assistant, which is really interesting. That's from its Siri acquisition yeah. of, uh, a couple of years ago, where you actually can you know, do voice commands and voice search across a variety of different, uh, you know, types of apps. Like you can ask it the weather, you can ask it directions, you can ask it, uh, you know, to, to tell you the nearest restaurants and it comes up with Yelp sure. views. And it's really interesting that, it, that Siri is going to be for us only because Siri kind of began its life as a third party app and then Apple bought it. And then as of today's announcement, the, the Siri that used to exist, that third-party app, has been pulled from the App Store. Right, they pulled it, yeah. And then when you launch the app now, even if you've already pre, like, you had it installed for years, they say, oh, so by the way, this app's not going to work anymore as of October 15th. So buy an iPhone 4S. Right, you have no other choice. Although I've had, I've had the app ever since they launched, and it's not something that I use on a regular basis. I think that it, the fact that it's integrated into the iPhone uh, more tightly is, is going to be really interesting and, and probably yeah. make it a feature that more people use. Yeah, it's just really kind of strange that they're requiring the iPhone 4S for it because most of the stuff with Siri, at least as far as I know, and at least uh, as based on how the, the app worked before, a lot of it's up in the cloud. A lot of it's on a server. Right, it's all server-based. It's, yeah. kind of, it, it's kind of confusing as to what, how much they actually need the, uh, the A5 processor for that. Yeah, Although, so, who knows, maybe they're taking advantage of the A5 processor to, uh, to return some results faster. Maybe we'll see. Uh, for all we know, Jailbreaker is going to figure out a way to get the uh, front, get Siri running on a four in you know a week. So. Right. So you know, people watching this, they want to know: Should I upgrade to the iPhone 4S or not? Uh, what's your What's your verdict here? <sighs> if you've got a four, uh, I'm not going to. I have a four. I'm not going to upgrade. It's just not enough for me. If you have a 3G, I would say definitely or 3GS definitely. If you're on Sprint, you have an iPhone. Right. If, if you're on Sprint. And you've finally gotten this opportunity to get an iPhone. And you've been waiting. Then absolutely, you know, uh, I'm almost tempted to switch to Sprint just because of their their data plans are better than AT and T and Verizon right now. So right. really depends on where you're at. But for some, yeah. I'd say yes. I think it's going to be yes. interesting also to see if, if how many iPhone fours they sell at ninety nine dollars because that's going to 
tap a whole new market yeah. for them. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people who maybe wouldn't even touch the iPhone 4S at $400 uh, or even at $200 yeah. will we'll look at it. So it'll be interesting to see how many of those they, uh, they sell. Yeah. And also, for all of the disappointment, uh, I'm sure that uh, you know, the orders are going to be through the roof. So yeah. we'll see that. So. Yeah, All right. Any last thoughts on, uh, on on where Apple is today in terms of uh, you know they threw out some interesting stats as well. You know, two hundred fifty million iOS devices sold, five hundred thousand apps in the uh, in the App Store, three billion dollars worth of um, you know it, of uh, in the app economy that's gone to developers. Yeah. Uh, that- they were really sort of throwing out stats to make them you know seem untouchable, although. As we both know, it's really a close race between Android and, and iPhone. Yeah, that $3 billion one is pretty remarkable to me because it doesn't necessarily show, because Apple hit $1 billion not too long ago, it doesn't show that it's, it's a, not a massive you know, uptick at the, at the rate, but it, that it's constant. You know? So it kind of kills this idea that, that the, the iOS app store was just this trend, you know, that people were going to get tired of buying apps or something. People are still buying apps. You know, another $2 billion since the last big update is pretty huge. Right. Well, I, I don't know about you. I'm going to get the iPhone 4S because uh, it looks it looks pretty good. <laughs> I'll probably give in a week after it launches. Okay. As soon as okay. I see, as soon as I see someone else with it, I'm going to want it. Terrific. Well, that that's it for that's all the time we have right now. Uh, and that that's there you have it. iPhone 4S. Uh, we'll see how how many of them fly off the shelves. All right. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Greg.